Hi my friends, thank you for joining me today. It's a hot one here, so if I sound like I'm choking, it's on the heat. I thought today we'd do an alcohol ink butterfly. And I'm going to apply it to a piece of artboard. This is just a six by six, inexpensive piece of artboard. So I've measured out on my paper, which is uh, Staples photo paper. Um, I think it's called premium. So less expensive than UPO, if uh, your budget is a concern. Anyway, I've measured out six by six inches. I have my not so efficient little puffer here. Going to use both Ranger and Pinata um, inks and a micron pen, possibly a Sharpie and also possibly a Sharpie Gold. We'll see how it goes. So I have my paper marked out as I said. Now I'm just going to add some alcohol and then just drop in some colors. Now I see these are these inks I haven't used for quite some time, so I've got little uh, grains here that I don't want. So I'm just going to dab this up and just hope for the best that the rest aren't all grained up like that one was. So we can easily come in and put another color over that. Let's try this magenta pinata. Now I've lightly outlined where I want my colors to go. Lightly outlined a butterfly on the edge here. And yeah, I'm just going to just keep coming in with my colors. Try to stay within the lines relatively. We're going to uh, bring our pen in later to mark out these lines here, so I'm not too worried about going over any area. bit of purple here I think. A little more alcohol. This is really dark. It's Pinata Passion Purple. It should be okay with the extra alcohol. If you want, you find it's still too dark, you can always dilute it. I find this quite dark, so. Here I'm just using a tissue. Okay, getting quite a nice effect here. I think I need some orange. Just a wee bit of alcohol again. 
and a touch of orange ink. Okay. Sometimes it'll gather in an area and make it very dark. That's when the, the uh, tissue comes in handy. Okay, that might be it for the top wing. We can uh, start working on the bottom. Such a pretty blue. And what we can also do is bring in our alcohol ink markers to uh, make this a little bit more defined. What do I want here? A little bit of green, I think. I don't know if I took green out. I know I have lots of green, so here we go. Okay, we don't want the bottom to overpower. So, dabbing in again. So we'll bring some of these colors down. I think some yellow at the tip. Just a drop of alcohol. Sorry, didn't mean to jar you like that. A little bit of the uh, magenta. Now normally I would consider wearing gloves because alcohol ink is so messy, but it is far too hot here today. So, a bit of tangerine down here. Some of that purple, I'm going to try to take it easy. As you've seen, it's very dark. So I just want the smallest drop there. bit more. I don't want that circle like that.
That's better. Okay. What color do we need? Um, maybe a little bit more blue. This is a darker blue. This is Baja blue. And that should just about do it. Now I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry. I'll probably come in with my dryer and uh, push that along. Now we need to draw in our butterfly's body and our line mark. So I'll be back in a flash with this all dried. Okay, so my, I've erased my pencil lines and my alcohol ink is dry. Um, and it needs to be totally dry. If you're going to use micron pens especially, they don't like dipping into the alcohol ink. I'm going to start off with my 01 micron pen and may end up going to my Sharpie, which is a slight bit thicker. If you've got a 02, you might use that. And going to draw in the body of my caterpillar. Now remember our line is about here, the line I drew in initially to measure out my 6 by 6. So, And just use your imagination when you're drawing in the body. This is the fun part. This is the doodling type time. You see I'm making these different sizes. Okay. Now we're going to define our define our wings. Let's start with our line here. And again, this is where you get to be as creative as you like. Make them large sections or small sections. We could do it in a neographic style.
You could make this checkerboard if you wanted to. You could use white ink instead of black. Okay. Now when I say near graphic, I mean connecting the lines with, um, let's see how that looks. Any intersecting lines, you connect them and fill them in, which is a technique in near graphic artwork. which this is working for me, so I will continue to do this. And as I said, just where the lines intersect, like this, it intersects right here. So I will connect. Now if it goes through several lines like this, then you're going to do it on several areas here, here. So four areas where those intersected. Now this will give you a look, a look that's a little bit more like stained glass. Okay. Now I'm going to continue Doing my neographic design here, but I'll speed it up. And we can come back when my line work is done and Maybe concentrate more on the body again. So, off we go.
Well, I forgot to set the camera up for speeding my uh, work up. So I'm going to do that now. I hope you were able to bear with me while I was doing that. I will speed it up now and then we'll come back. Okay, as you can see, I have straight, uh, strengthened some of my lines because they weren't showing up very well, so I made them a little bit thicker. I decided to go with the gold uh, Sharpie pen for the inside of the body, and then I went with some checkerboard here because those of you who know me know that's just something I do. And I thought, just to add a little bit more interest and tie the body in with the uh, wings, that we would do a little bit of checkerboard here, just making small strips here, horizontal and diagonal lines. And then we come in and fill every second square. I just find and maybe this is just me, but let me know in the comment section if you find this too. Adding black just adds so much to your color. And adding black and white checks like this adds that much more. So just adds interest for your eye. And maybe I'll put some down here just to tie it up a bit. And... Add another line here because I don't want it quite this big. Now, of course, you could do this if you like. You could pass on this. I'm just big on these checkerboard designs. And like I said, just fill in every second one. Black, white, black, white. And in this case, some yellow and black, black, yellow, black, white. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, thumbs up always helps. It helps promote my channel so that more people you know, it pushes it forward so more people see it. Uh, and, you know, only do it if you like this, <laughs> of course. So I think that just about does it for our... Now, I'm going to, I believe... Let me see how we, what we have here. Now this is my size, the size of my board, so it's okay if we're cutting off some. I'm going to cut this down, and with Aliens Tacky Glue, because we do need something fairly strong, I'm going to uh, 
attach this to my board. Come this way. And then I'm going to decide if I want to uh, cover this with resin, which I probably will. Just to give it a glass-like finish. I love working with resin. I just love how it finishes a piece of artwork. Okay, there's our butterfly. is going to fit onto our 6x6. Six six. I think I'm just going, uh, I don't know about the Aliens Tacky Glue. I may just, yeah, I think I'm just going to use um, Mod Podge for now, or acrylic medium, whatever, you know, whatever you use to glue things down. I decided on the Mod Podge because the Aliens Tacky Glue, um, it'll work, but I'm going to have to use like a half a jar of glue and uh, and it may uh, buckle a little bit. So I know I'm safe with the Mod Podge, so we'll Glue it down with the Mod Podge for now. Now, if you decide you don't want to use, or if you're not into using resin, um, I would suggest a uh, varnish spray to start, just to protect your piece, and then either Mod Podge um, or another medium, and possibly high gloss varnish Liquitex makes a good high gloss, 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 <laughs> oh gloss, high gloss varnish. Okay, let's put that down. But as I said, I will probably use resin, and I use magic resin out of Montreal here in Canada, which is beautiful resin. Beautiful resin at a decent price. Okay. Now a little bit of this will come over the edge of my of my artboard, and that's fine. I can trim it down a bit, and if there's still a little bit, I can take a piece of uh, sandpaper. And sand it down so it just sort of blends into uh, my board like this just fine a fine sandpaper I don't know what this is yeah I'm not sure what grit that is but something fine too much there so I have to trim that off okay come back with my sandpaper again and after you sand it down it's ready for your finish as I said whether you decide to uh, go with a high gloss finish just some Mod Podge 
any other kind of finish you like to use. I'm curious to know what finishes people generally like to use. As I said, um, resin is my finish just because it gives it such a gorgeous glass look. So I will be doing this in resin and I will come back and show it to you. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but nonetheless, I'll show you how it looks with the resin. So I'm going to leave you there for now. I'm going to put my John Henry here discreetly. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the finished product. For you, it will be seconds from now. For me, it will be tomorrow. So, yeah. See you in the back. So, here we have it, folks. This is our little piece. Our butterfly finished with resin. As you can see, it makes for a gorgeous glass-like finish. And what I do is I paint the edges in black and add a hook in the back for hanging. But yeah, I just wanted to let you see what it would look like with a resin finish. And as I said, you could finish this off with high gloss um, varnish, spray varnish, k spray varnish. You could use Mod Podge, all kinds of things. So... Yeah, this is just what I prefer. So, hope you have a fabulous day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.